What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Uh, today I'm going to do a video and show you how to build a smaller, more simple and cheaper version of this window uh, heater unit, the solar heater. Um, this is going to be a build that we're going to do with minimal materials. Uh, it's going to be done on the cheap and it's going to be a little bit smaller so it's easier to store uh, but still be, be useful and produce plenty of heat. One of the purposes for this build is to use up some, some scrap wood that I have laying around because one of my New Year's resolutions is to get this garage organized. It looks like a mess right now. And uh, But the way that applies to you is that one of the goals is to keep this as cheap as possible. Um, the major goal being to get some free heat. Um, now obviously these materials cost me something at some point. I've got some insulation laying around, I've got some screen left over from last year, um, but this is using some, I'm going to try to use as much readily available materials that you may have laying around your garage or very cheap materials that you can build a heater that will actually make an impact upon your heating bill this winter um, without breaking the bank. Now last year the one I built was you know, probably $150 I think if I remember correctly and there's no way that I recaptured that money off of that heater. It was a fun build, it was a learning experience, and it, and it worked, but it wasn't going to, to yield a net positive return on investment. Okay, because I'm trying to use up materials that I already have, I'm going to work backwards a little bit here. This is all of the screen material that I have right now, um, and I don't really feel like going out and paying 25 bucks for another roll. So I'm going to take the measurements of this screen so that I can uh, know how much I want to get at least two of these screen uh, the screens that will absorb the sun's energy so I need to take measurements to figure out what the maximum size screen is that I can fit into this box so for my for my piece uh, I've got 36 inches uh, wide by 33 and a half inches tall so I'm going to make it 18 inches wide um, and thus the box is going the, the maximum of the box the width can be is 18 and then so I, I need to cut two pieces out of this so alright so the first thing that I'm going to do for these screens is I'm going to build some frames for them out of this leftover piece of one by that I have I think this is one by six um, but I'm going to cut some three quarter inch strips with the table saw Okay, the next thing that I need to do, we've got our pieces all ripped here on the table saw and it's going to be, once again, it's going to be 18 inches wide and I'm, I'm going to go with 33 inches tall. So what I need to do, I've already got the kind of the side pieces here, although I haven't cut them to 33 inches, but now I need to cut the, the, uh, you know, the side pieces here that will go in between to make 18 inches. So Okay, I've got these pieces cut to 33 inches and uh, we got it set out. Now I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue and some 18 inch nails, finish nails to, you know, just kind of hold the frame together and then we're going to let that dry for a little bit. So I'm going to make two of these, like I said, glue it and uh, nail it together and let it dry and then we're going to use some spray adhesive to attach the the screen to these. Alright, I've let these dry for a little while, about 15 or 20 minutes, and now I'm going to take some spray adhesive and spray it along the frame and along the edge of the um, screen, and then we're going to pull it tight, and then I'm going to use some staples to kind of hold it tight while the glue dries. Right, now what I'm doing is I'm using the kerf of the blade, which is pretty much perfect to the piece of glass that I purchased for this project. This is an 18 inch by 36 inch pane of replacement glass I picked up at Home Depot for 10 bucks. And it is almost dead on the same width or thickness as, as the kerf of the blade. So I've cut some quarter inch grooves in the, just some, some more scrap uh, 1x4s and 1x3 pieces which I'm going to use for the frame for the glass 
and now I'm going to cut them into one inch strips and then we will cut them to length on the miter saw and put it all together to hold the, the glass in place. Okay, now that I've got these pieces cut, I'm just kind of dry fitting it, uh, test fitting it now, and I'm going to mark where I need to cut these pieces to make, uh, to finish making the frame, cut these off. Then we're going to use some black spray paint that I picked up, just some cheapo gloss black, um, and then I'm going to paint the frame as well as paint the outside of the screens so that we want basically we want everything inside the heater to be black or reflective so that uh, well preferably black um, so that the, the it'll soak up the sun's radiation heat up the box and transfer that to the air okay here we have the screen frames and the uh, the glass frames and I've hit them with one coat of black spray paint and you'll see that I've only done half of the you know I basically split the frames in half I attach them at one angle or one uh, corner that way I can you know put the glass back in it and then attach the other two corners at the end if obviously if you put um, even the three corners together, it would be pretty difficult to get the glass in and slide it all the way down to the end. So this way it allows for easier assembly of the glass later on. Now I'm just going to let this uh, finish drying. Um, I'm not really going to do a second coat. It, it's not 100% necessary to get super even coverage. You just want most of the surface to be black to help with uh, energy absorption. Alright, now it's time to actually build the frame of the box itself. So I've got my piece, this is a piece of solar board um, left over from my shed project a while back. It's got basically like an aluminum foil glued to one side. Other than that it's just normal particle board. Alright, well in every video it's become a tradition that I make a small mistake. I forgot to leave a little bit extra length on the bottom so that we could have a little plenum at the bottom so the the cold air will come through this channel here and then we'll collect at the bottom and then be sucked up through these screens um, into you know the top of the the device also um, I'm going to have to drill some holes in the bottom of these screens and also in the top to allow for airflow movement. I also forgot that. So you're getting two mistakes here that uh, you can hopefully not make yourself. Alright, so I fixed my boo-boo here. I uh, went ahead and uh, installed these rails on the side which will create the cavity where the, the cold air will come along the bottom. This will be the plenum on the bottom where the air kind of comes down this way, sits in the bottom, and gets sucked up into the top layer. So we've got our rail here that creates that, that gap, and then I kind of used a 2x4 to uh, attach these two pieces together, and then use some caulk, some silicone caulking that I had laying around. It's not the high heat stuff, but um, you know, it's, this isn't going to get over about 200 so it's it shouldn't be a huge huge deal um, but that will make sure that we don't get any outside air um, coming into this okay so I started drilling some holes here in the bottom and in the top and I've got them spaced about every inch or so apart and uh, it's a 3 16 drill bit I didn't want to go any bigger than that. Now I know I'm, I'm going to get some comments from people about, well that's not going to let much air flow through, you know, blah 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 blah. It's not designed to move a lot of air. It's designed to move a little bit of air that's very very hot. So this will work fine. There's going to be two of these layers. Um, there's enough holes that we can get a little bit of air draw through it and on into the house and that's the whole the whole goal of this. If you want to build one with a fan and move a lot more air, there's plenty of other videos 
go watch one of those videos. This one is a a passive system. It requires no energy to run and it only moves a low volume of air but as we've seen with my previous build it's it's a it's very high uh, temperature air and uh, once again we're we're working with free materials we're very cheap materials here so we're we're making do with what we have okay now i've got these two pieces uh, lined up here and i'm going to use some wood glue as well as some finished nails just to kind of hold it together and that will finish creating the box uh, or you know the inside of the box anyways uh, the frame around the outside we're going to be using those two by fours so I want to get this uh, glued up and, and clamped up and nailed in so that it can start drying and uh, we can work on the frame okay now I'm going to finish the frame now that it's or the not the frame the yeah the window frame um, now that it's dried, I've got one side, I've got it all connected around the glass, slid into the kerf there, and uh, I'm just going to lightly clamp one side just to hold it together, and then I'm going to carefully glue and use a finish nail very carefully into the corner up here, and then do the same over here. Okay, here I've got the frame of the outside mocked up here. I've got it on top of some 2x4 scrap piece spacers here just so that I can get it all at the same level and kind of eyeball it uh, make sure that's the way I want to do it and uh, before I get stuff cut off at the miter saw to the exact size that I need so the, the bottom piece is in there it's got the the uh, the plenum down here at the bottom and <coughs> in here there's the two layers. So you've got the cold air comes in here, warm air will come through the top. So we're going to worry about the top piece later. Um, for now, we're just going to fashion the three sides and get them connected into this existing piece with uh, some glue and some nails. And just to make sure that we can see what it's going to look like, let's go ahead and throw the screens in the middle here. They're all dried now and painted. Okay, so as you can see, there's a tiny, about a sixteenth of an inch gap in here which is fine just allows more air movement through this once it's all set up okay I got some some screws drilled in here again we're not going for anything pretty the this is something supposed to be quick and dirty and cheap and uh, so we're just doing some rough carpentry here obviously using two by fours and scraps also while I was in here I put in a little stop block down here so that these screens would not fall down like I was talking about. Uh, I think that'll be better instead of gluing these. That way I can, you know, replace them or or do something else in the future if I decide I want to put, you know, pop cans or something in there someday. I can just take them out easily. And uh, so anyway, that's what it'll look like. Um, still haven't figured out what I want to do on the top. I'm going to brainstorm on that for a little while and then uh, show you what I've come up with. Okay, what I've decided to do, I've got some scrap 45 degree 2x4 pieces here on the ends. Now, this is going to be laid up against the wall at an angle like that to match the angle of the sun. So that's why this angle is going to, the flat part is going to go toward the window. It's going to give me a little bit more of a direct access to the window. This middle piece in here is to divide the hot side from the cold side and I cut it at a uh, 45 degree angle right there so that it would match uh, I cut that on the table saw so that it would match the side pieces and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach those together all right here you can see what we've got going here for the top we've got this piece that we that we glued up last night 
it's now dried and is attached to the rest of the uh, device and then I've used some some caulking and some wood glue to keep it all tight and sealed up. Okay again we're using scraps so these are not all you know even or anything like that uneven heights uneven widths don't care I'm not gonna break out the table saw to rip this tiny little piece even with these now what this is this is a frame for the glass uh, this is going to go around the outside so that I can put the glass in uh, affix it down somehow so that it's reasonably airtight but um, but I want to be able to get the glass back out later if I want to replace the inside material or uh, you know if I need to replace the glass for some reason if it were to crack or or any number of things so that's why we're doing this little frame and I'm gonna go ahead and glue it up and uh, and nail it together and then I'll attach it to the piece outside here that's that's drying uh, once it's dry and we'll go from there okay here we got the uh, this is mostly done and you can see now that I've got it leaned up against at a 45 degree angle um, which is not exactly the the angle of the sun but it's close enough that it's going to do the job um, why I decided to do that at a 45 degree angle there um, so it's all you know we I used the rest of the the can of spray paint to kind of make sure everything was black on the front and on the inside of the, the top channel and I'm gonna leave it out I'm gonna go grab a temperature gauge uh, a, basically I'm going to use a meat thermometer and a a temperature logger a USB temperature logger to put in there to kind of gather some some data for you to see how how well it's doing um, I may have to do that tomorrow because the sun's already not at the optimal angle but um, I'll get some data for you and we'll see how this thing actually performs in the real world okay this has been in the sun for about an hour now it's about four o'clock in the afternoon and as you can see based upon the, the shadow it's not the optimal you know the, the sun's kind of coming in at an angle but I just wanted to show you just in this short amount of time how hot this is I mean that's that's pretty good stuff I'm going to put this temperature logger in it overnight and it's going to record a sampling every 30 seconds. I'm going to let that sit in the inside here for 24 hours and then show you that information and also you know you can see kind of a real-time measurement here and then I can show you a graph with this logger of the performance of this device. Alright another quick update on this. This is it's the next day now. Uh, you can see by the shadows it's it's just a little bit after noon, so this is pretty optimal time of day to be reading a temperature. And that's what we're seeing right now, about 185 degrees. Um, I've got the temperature probe sitting inside there, and uh, you know it's it's on the bottom, so it's probably a little bit cooler than than up here, but it'll be good enough. So. I'll let that sit for another five or six hours <clears throat> and then uh, take the probe out and show you what we got as far as the graph. Okay, here we have the graph of the temperature logger and you'll see that we got up to about a hundred, a little over 140 degrees uh, during the, the hottest part of or the, you know, when the sun was directly over top during the day. And it produced usable heat for between six and eight hours during the middle of the day. So that's pretty good. Now remember this was, this probe was at the bottom of the box where it's going to be the coolest. So and the top with the meat thermometer was showing 185 degrees. So this is producing some really good really hot uh, air. Not a high volume of air but it, but it's very hot and not bad for I, I spent less than twenty dollars on this whole thing not including the materials I already had. So I consider that a success. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.